players and the ones who are on the PGA side, not thrilled with how this went down yesterday. Yeah, you know, it's funny. We had uh, the writer, um, Alan Shipnock, on yesterday, who's an expert on this. And he said that PGA Commissioner Jay Monahan will ultimately be okay because right now there are a lot of golfers mad at him, but that will probably be smoothed over over time. I don't care if the golfers are mad at him. I gotta, I'm gotta. i more worried about the fans. Do you think fans are going to like watching Saudi Arabia ads all over the PGA Tour next year? This is coming home. And I think today, I think the PGA, Jay Monahan probably didn't understand the backlash. I think the fan backlash is even more important than the golfer backlash, which is important, but... I think that we're just beginning to see what people really think of Saudi Arabia run golf. Yeah, you're right. And it's such a good point about the advertising because with the public investment fund from Saudi Arabia now taking like basically full ownership, if yeah. you will, of professional golf in this country, they're also one of the, the biggest advertiser now. So is it going to be Saudi Arabia tourism? It's funny because... There's another big story in sports that's going on today, and it kind of intersects. We'll, we'll play sound for you from Rory and Bryson DeChambeau and everything, but the Lionel, Met, Lionel Messi story is also fascinating because the reports are now that the world's biggest star in soccer is going to be coming to MLS to play for Inner Miami, and he, while turning down to uh, an opportunity to play soccer in Saudi Arabia like Cristiano Ronaldo is doing, but he is an ambassador to Saudi Arabia as far as the tourism. Mm. Like, it's the money, it's just going to be everywhere. And inevitably, Perloff, this is going to come right to our doorstep even more with team sports. It's coming. Maybe not to the NFL yet. Mm, I don't know. But if the to NFL... Major League Baseball and to the NBA and to hockey, I could I could see this coming, and it's going to be on our doorstep. And how are people going to feel when it's not just an individual golfer who's like an mm. independent contractor? When it's your favorite baseball team, and now you have to reconcile with the fact that the owners could be from Saudi Arabia. Well, I mean, the soccer guys over there know Saudi Arabia already owns. Premier League teams. Premier League teams, right? Yeah, and Manchester th- City and Newcastle. Right, and they've been Manchester City's been outspending everybody forever. So, and I there's not a lot of backlash. So, I guess it would be okay. But, for example, you're a Mets fan. Yeah. Steve Cohen took over, and every Mets fan was excited because they could outspend everyone. Okay, but yeah. Steve also got some backlash because he also is the recipient of the largest fine that's ever yeah. been given out by the Security and Exchange right, right, right. Commission. I mean, this guy, I read the book about him. It's in the studio here. I mean, he basically was insider trading. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, here's the thing I wonder. But there hasn't been – I think that that all kind of smoothed over. I think a little time – If there's a team that is bought by the Saudi Arabians and they outspend everyone, I think American sports fans are going to have a major problem with that. I think they're going to say they're going to cry foul. I say pick a team. Say they buy the the Chicago Cubs or something. Yeah, the Cubs. And the Cubs, the Saudi Arabian team becomes a powerhouse because they outspend everyone. Now, I understand that is baseball going to a harder cap or are they still going to be super soft? Anyway, yeah, I mean, right now the Padres outspend everyone in some mysterious way. And the Dodgers. <laughs> well, they have a lot oh, of money. Yeah, yeah. The, the the gulf between the rich teams and the poor teams is, is larger than ever in baseball. I do think that, yeah, I, you're right. I think it's coming, and I think it's going to be problematic. I don't think it's going to be simple. No, because there is no answer unless you just say it's all about the money and it's inevitable that – T, that, that the public investment fund is going to own pro sports teams in the United States, unless that's your answer, there is no answer for that you can come up with that's going to be satisfactory for 9-11 families or for anyone who was touched by that in this country. So Bryson DeChambeau, he tried. So he was somebody who did take the money from Live and went to go play on the Live Tour, and he was on CNN yesterday, and he was asked about the merger. It's unfortunate what has happened, and that's something I cannot necessarily speak on as I'm a golfer, but what I can say is that what they're trying to do, what they're trying to work on is, is to be better allies, because we are allies with them. And, and look, I'm not going to get into politics of it. I'm not specialized in that, but what I can say is they are trying to do good for the world and showcase themselves in a light that hasn't been seen in a while. And nobody's perfect, but we're all trying to improve in life. Yeah, I mean, nobody's perfect, uh, you know, was in response, you know, to a question basically about human rights abuses yeah. and things like that going on in Saudi Arabia, and he's getting a lot of backlash for it. Yeah, I mean, he's actually not a very, as I understand it, not a well-liked golfer already, and obviously has the rivalry with Brooks Kepka. but the fact that they put him out there to have to answer those questions shows you kind of where this whole thing is. I don't think it's well thought out at all. I think it's sort of 
haphazard. And kind of like, if, if you ever watch a live broadcast, I, I've never really watched it live. But I I've tuned seen, into the first one if, out of pure curiosity. So if the actual product is that big of a mess, what's it like behind the scenes? Well, <laughs> that was always the ridiculous part about yeah. this is that live wasn't working. And no. They still were able to, you know, use it as a way to eventually take over golf in this country and the world because they now own the DP Tour and the European yeah. Tour. So it's interesting, though, because... Everyone believes now, after about 24 hours with this story and finding out more details, that basically Liv is going away. Nobody's really yeah. expecting it, I think, to exist after this. Like, Greg Norman has not been the commissioner of Liv, has not been anywhere near this story. He apparently only found out about it minutes before uh, it was announced on television. I mean, he's been in the dark. Here's Rory McIlroy even despite the merger, says he absolutely hates Liv. I still hate Liv. Like, I hate Liv. Like, I, I hope it goes away, and I would fully expect that it does. Okay, so he was also asked about people who are calling the PGA now hypocrites. I said it to Jay yesterday, you've galvanized everyone against something, and that thing that you galvanized everyone against you've now partnered with. So, yeah, of course I understand. It, it, it is hypocritical. It sounds hypocritical. Uh, let's hear more from Rory, how he feels now after uh, live in the PGA under the same umbrella. It's hard for me to not sit up here and feel somewhat like a sacrificial lamb, feeling like I've put myself out there and this is what happens. Again, I see how this is better for the game of golf. There's no denying that. But for me as an individual, there's just going to have to be conversations that are had. I mean, it's going to be feelings that are going to have to be mended, you know, thing, people that are going to be have to be made whole. But the interesting there, that final thing that Rory said, which is like, ultimately, this is going to be good for the game of golf. And I think that's still hard to reconcile for people today, Perloff, because mm -hmm. it might be better in the long run. But man, the path to get there didn't feel like the one that had to be taken. You know, was golf really on the precipice of extinction? Was the only thing that was going to save golf was this the money from Saudi Arabia? That, to me, is where this doesn't pass the smell test. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people who don't watch any of the PGA tournaments. They just watch the majors. So, I mean, the majors are going to remain untouched. Of course. I'm kind of curious. I was just thinking about what is Saudi Arabia actually buying? So, this is sports washing, right? Yep. They want to use sports to make Saudi Arabia seem more mainstream in the West. Yeah. But if Liv goes away, then you just have the old PGA Tour with a lot of Saudi Arabia tourism commercials. And money and influence. And but how do they influence it? I mean, like, how, on its surface, why why am I going to watch the, um, I don't know, the Valero Open right. and say, Saudi, oh, Saudi Arabians aren't Maybe bad. Maybe I should go there on spring Is break. Won't yeah. it just be the same tournament that I've always watched? Well, no, I think there are still going to be changes made, like the no-cut tournaments, the smaller fields. I think those are gone, no? Well, they are trying to, the PGA announced that they were, um, they were going to, make those changes as a response to live. But I think the idea was getting more stars on TV all the time, right? So no cuts, making sure the fields are smaller, all that stuff. Here's where, and this is why I say it's, this is going to be more, even more on our doorstep, I think in the rather near future, I would imagine, is because the like sports washing aspect to it, what else does it do? Mm -hmm. Like, and what, where, do, what are the other tentacles Obviously, something big because I don't think it's just the country of Saudi Arabia woke up and was like, you know what? We love golf. <laughs> Why don't we go buy the PGA Tour? There's obviously a secondary or tertiary, I don't want to say motive here, like it's ne necessarily nefarious, but there's like another angle that has to exist here about getting in and mainstreaming Saudi Arabia in this country and doing it through sports. Yeah, but I mean, Liv has been here for over a year. Do you feel, do people feel differently about Saudi Arabia? I don't, I don't know. I mean, there are a lot of people who are just resigned to saying, all right, this is going to be good for yeah. golf, so let's just, you know, let's just right. let it happen. But I'm not sure. You say, you, obviously, they're going to spend all this money. I, I don't know. They spent all this money on Live, and it was a garbage product. So I don't know that it's so, yes, you're right. They're going to spend all this money. I don't know that it's definitely going to work. I saw, a, I was looking at Live articles today. I saw an article in Politico saying that Live was a gigantic failure for Saudi Arabia. Definitely. But I think Live was just the front door. It was just the appetizer. Yes. It was just the way to get in right. and knowing that the end game was to take over the PGA Tour right. and they, every other tour. They point out that public opinion in Saudi Arabia and America did not change at all with a year of Live. Interesting. 
uh, which I, I rings true to me. Like, I don't know anybody who feels differently. Either you don't know about Saudi Arabia, you might generally have probably negative views of it. I don't know. This is, yeah, we all say it's sports washing. Maybe it's going to take some time. Maybe I'm being naive. But just because, like, what is it, the Canada Open this week is going to have a bunch of Saudi Arabia tourism commercials, I'm not sure that's going to work on me. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, it seems, has it been working in the Premier League where they've been owning teams for a lot longer? I mean, you got Ronaldo's playing there right now, and Messi is an ambassador for them and was just 50-50 on whether to play there or whether to play in Miami. Ultimately chose Miami, but or we think the reports are he's choosing Miami, but still is now an ambassador. It's like, that's part yeah. of it too. You get world famous. I don't know. Is Saudi Arabia popular in England? I, I'm not sure. Where do you get, is Saudi Arabia tourism a thing? Do you remember during the World Cup watching the tourism uh, yeah. videos for Qatar, for Qatar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do remember that. I mean, I don't think they're doing those for the good, yeah. for, you know, for their, for their health. Like they're trying to mainstream more yeah. of these Middle Eastern countries. Yeah, I mean, listen, you know I'm a huge Sex and the City fan, right? Is that right? They paid for Sex and City 2, the movie. No, my wife is actually. But they paid for yeah, the second movie. Sure. That's what that's what all guys say. I think it was, <laughs> I think it was they Qatar. Were, no, they went to. Um, or was it Abu Dhabi? They went to Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi paid for the entire movie. And they sat right? it there. They sat it there as, as a tourism ad. And honestly, I can't imagine that it worked. But the movie was terrible. The movie was god awful. Yeah, and like, know you know why it was got transition awful. Transition to that because but it was randomly Samantha. Uh, no, no, that's what's the main character's name? Sorry, uh, our girl Sarah Jessica Parker yeah. met Aiden, having to be shopping for rugs in a bazaar. You saw the movie, right? <laughs> I did, but why are we going through the plot of Sex in the City two right now? Because <laughs> I'll tell you cares? why. Because they tried to work in a natural tie into Abu Dhabi, right. and it was the stupidest thing you've ever seen in your life. Nobody watched that movie and said, you know, I got to go to Abu Dhabi. Our next girls' trip is going to be too. <laughs> to Abu Dhabi, yes. Maybe. It was just, maybe maybe it's more long-term than that, but I don't think this is a no-brainer that this is all going to work for Saudi Arabia. The other thing, too, is I, I feel like we're not talking about the fact that the four biggest events of golf, the four Super Bowls of golf are yeah. the majors, and they have nothing to do with any of this. No, but I don't think they're, I don't think they're getting into golf and sports washing just because they have all this money and they don't know what to do with it. Clearly, there are bigger goals in mind here. Yeah, that's a it's sports washing. Yeah, right. So That's I, their goal. We all know it. They're right. not hiding it. I know. So maybe it doesn't get you to go to Saudi Arabia on spring break, but there has to be. I don't think that is necessarily the end game, but there's got to be more to they, That's this. what they want. I know. And it might not work on you, but it might work on someone else. Maybe go yeah. Sex in the City 2 didn't work on you, but maybe there was a girl's no, trip. No, you, you're absolutely right. Uh, it's not going to work Abu on Dhabi. me. But I do wonder today, you know, what's the backlash going to be? Jay Monahan obviously did not. It didn't look like he understood what was going to happen to him. Then he's a fool. Well, I mean, listen, like there he's was behaving like there were strong headlines. There were strong <laughs> headlines against him yesterday, and I think this is just beginning. I, I don't even think he survives this. I mean, he's going to be a joke. But I, he's I mean, already. I mean, he's already a joke. He, right. he and I don't think that's going to go away. I, I know this comes off as hypocritical. It's like, yeah, and it's not just a small thing. You know, this isn't like, oh, I became hypocritical because, you know, I, I said I, I don't even know yeah. what a smaller example would be, but this one is emotional. It You intentionally tugged yeah. on people's heartstrings. I mean, it's deplorable. Yeah, I think corporations aren't dumb. They're going to distance themselves from this guy at some point because why would you say you're a huge advertiser like AT&T, you brought Jay Monahan to an event. You have to know there are going to be people there who are going to be very upset with him. And <laughs> yeah, rightfully so. Like, at t doesn't want that. They want none of that. So I think he's going to be to – I don't think he even realizes now. I think he's going to be toxic.